Now, what about the Xylo Pi project? How are you doing with that? You know, I really thought that after the last PCBs, the troubles for this project were, were over. But then, bam! Out of nowhere, but also everywhere, at the same time, there it is. Logic levels. Well, that, that sounds logical. It was, uh, right there, the whole time. And you know, I really, I started to really doubt myself because I had, I had tested that circuit and it couldn't be that the whole time the thing was dead in the water, right? Like, I had a huge test and it, it was working. The solenoids were noiding. It couldn't be that I had been using the wrong logic level the whole time. I hadn't actually built a circuit based on 5 volt logic and been using 3.3 volt logic the whole time. It, that, that couldn't be possible. Then what was the problem? Well, it, it turned out I hadn't. Oh, so did you imagine this, the testing? No, I, I did test. I just hadn't tested the same circuit that I put on the PCBs. And why do you think you did that? Well, I, I know why I did that. And how do you feel about that? Regret. Like the hungry, hungry hippos. Exactly. When I was testing the circuit, I was using these ICs that can drive eight solenoids. Uh, there's eight inputs, eight outputs, and the inputs take 3.3 volt logic. And then there's basically like a circuit in inside the IC that can just, just drive them and it works really well. Well, that sounds like a very simple solution to your problem. Oh, it was super simple and it, it worked perfectly. Uh, but I just I had in my head that in the final design, I wanted these little PCBs for each solenoid. And that's why I switched to the individual MOSFET diode circuit for each one. And I thought with the way that I had the MUXs set up from the Raspberry Pi, that I was bringing in 5 volt logic. But then uh, a friend pointed out to me, like, they weren't sure if I was actually doing that. And that's when I realized that this whole time, the circuit was not in fact sound. So what I'm hearing is that you change the circuit without testing to fit a hypothetical idea of how you thought the final project would be assembled. Yeah. I see. Uh, whoa, I, I thought this was a judgment-free zone. Oh, oh, and it is, but I'm noticing a pattern. A pattern of self-sabotage brought on by being a little bit too inside your own head. Um, and really, this conversation is a great example of that for Everyone to see. Everyone? The proverbial everyone. Of course. Well, as I've said, this is my dream project, and I've, I've been thinking about it a lot in my head for a very long time. We're talking years here. But I've decided to make some changes uh, based purely on logic. As all good decisions are made. Yes, I'm going to go back to those ICs so I can still use the Pi and the Muxes and just let 3.3 volt logic run the show. Oh, that kind of logic. Well, yeah, what kind of logic do you think I was talking about? Anyway, uh, I'm also going to take the buttons out of the equation. Oh, but you've, you've expressed a very, a very deep and distinct fondness for those buttons. Are, are you sure you want to say goodbye to them? It was a hard decision, but yes, the buttons, despite my love for them, were making this project toxic. They were overcomplicating the circuit, and eventually they would probably overcomplicate the assembly process as well. If I just stick with this as a MIDI project rather than also making it a physical instrument project, uh, I think I can really get back on track and just focus on the Raspberry Pi, taking in those MIDI signals and sending out 3.3 volt logic to trigger those solenoids with the ICs. Well, it seems that you've really taken the time that you needed to come to this decision and You've applied everything you've learned so far, and you've used quite a bit of logic as well. Oh, well, I mean, not really. It's, it's only 3.3 volts. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Splitsy DIY, and once again, we have the Xylopi project. Uh, for those just tuning in, I've got a couple videos on this project so far, but basically the concept's gonna be, I'm gonna take these little, little tiny solenoid motors and I'm going to put them on top of a little glockenspiel, or more colloquially known as a xylophone, uh, and they'll strike the keys. Definitely not an original idea. People have done it before, but I have always wanted to make one. Uh, 
this one though is going to be MIDI powered, uh, so it can either take in MIDI data from a computer, like if you had a song all queued up, uh, and it will play it, or a uh, like MIDI keyboard or other MIDI instrument, maybe a maybe a MIDI guitar, and it would it would just work. Um, well, it wouldn't just work, but you get what I'm saying. Now, I I worked on this. I started working on this last summer, and we're now going into the spring proper. Uh, so it's been a bit now. The code was actually really easy with um, the Raspberry Pi, and I'm using some uh, Blinka, aka Circuit Python for single board computers running Linux libraries. So it's it's really easy code that basically once a MIDI note comes in, if it's a note on message, then if it matches up with uh, the note number, then that solenoid very quickly strikes and retracts. Where, where I went off the rails a bit was when I went to the PCBs, and I kind of alluded this in the beginning sketch, which I, I hope you found to be funny. Um, <laughs> or you just think I've lost my mind. Either way, basically I had in my head this idea that there were going to be these little PCBs for every single solenoid, and I also had in my head too that I wanted to be able to use uh, physical buttons to play the keyboard kind of like analog style too. Um, and what ended up happening, just to kind of summarize the issue that I eventually made me go, okay, I just got to step away from this, uh, was the way that I had to design the circuit so that the, the for the analog stuff, obviously it needs five volt logic. So I have this separate five volt power supply, but then for that same circuit to trigger the solenoids for, from the MIDI perspective, that means I need to get five volt logic coming out from whatever um, signal from the Pi is gonna get to the solenoids. So, and of course the Raspberry Pi with using um, the MUXs um, it's only sending out 3.3 volt logic, so then I was trying some logic shifting circuits, and it just, it was a mess. And so I basically went back to the drawing board with the circuit, and now I'm back to where I, how I originally tested this thing when I just wanted to do just MIDI, and I've decided to just keep it solely a MIDI project. So I think in the long run, that'll be good. If I want to do an analog xylophone, like, I wouldn't even need a microcontroller, so, and maybe that's something I do in the future or uh, something like that. So yeah, this is gonna now just be solely a MIDI project with the Raspberry Pi, and honestly, it makes more sense. So there's that. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about what's changed with the circuit. Uh, so basically, still we have the Raspberry Pi, and we're doing MIDI over UART, and I've got a video solely on MIDI over UART with the Raspberry Pi, so um, I'll, I'll link that down below. So the MIDI signal's going in over UART, and then we've got uh, two MUXs uh, multiplexers, which are communicating to the Raspberry Pi over I squared C. And so uh, we're able to send out signals from those MUXs to these Darlington um, motor drivers. They're uh, ULN2803 drivers. So basically it's this 16-pin uh, IC, uh, which takes in 3-volt logic on one side and then puts out 5-volt logic on the other to drive the motors. So it ends up being a really clean circuit because we have like the I squared C stuff and address things happening for the muxes, but then it's literally pin to pin from the mux, uh, the output from the Pi, and both of these uh, muxes, they're 23017s. So there's uh, 16 um, outputs on each of these muxes for a total of 32, which is how many um, uh, notes I need for the xylophone. So we're basically just going one-to-one, uh, -one, the output to the um, three-volt input on the drivers, then going five-volt output to the solenoids, and as a result... It's, it's working pretty well. <laughs> so yeah, it just works, uh, and that, what kills me is that was my original circuit, but I got all wrapped up in the this idea that Oh, then the wiring, it's going to be messy, and how's that going to work, and oh my god, but it's fine. It's fine, like, it's fine. I think a downside of getting into PCB stuff is you start to kind of fear wiring or kind of think that having, like, spaghetti wires is bad, and 
it, it really, it isn't, like, this is DIY electronics. Like, I'm not building a panel for a, a NASA spacecraft, man. Like, PCBs are cool and convenient, but that was actually something we ran into on the MIDI guitar project that I just did with Noe. Like, we talked about, should we do a PCB for some of these components? And at the end of the day, it was like, well, there's just so much wiring and so much distance that it doesn't make sense. Like, it's just going to make it more complex. And then you also get into a cost thing, too. So basically, I don't know right now how I'm going to do the PCB or the wiring for any of this. And I think that's good because how I'm going to approach it now, the circuit is literally sound now. The code is good. So instead of trying to think about, oh, how is this all going to work? What I'm going to work on next, especially with these times we are living in, uh, I'm going to work on the mount for the xylophone. Because obviously there's going to be like some 3D printing with that. And actually, again, we're going back months now. Uh, the camera slider project from December. For those who don't know, the camera slider is using extruded aluminum and then these 3D printed components that slide in and it's just really nice. And all of a sudden I realized I could use the extruded aluminum, have the over the glockenspiel, and then I could have little mounts for the motors and they would be suspended above the glockenspiel so that it would be able to strike the notes properly. Because one thing that I was worried about when I was thinking about how am I going to build this like mounting housing or whatever you want to call it is the notes, like the motors are going to have to be precisely like suspended uh, both in height and um, horizontally as well. And it could move and all this stuff. So I was wondering how I could do that. But if I have extruded aluminum, I'm able to slide these little individual mounts, then I can position everything really nicely. So I think once I get that all set, uh, get the extruded aluminum, the uh, mounts for the motors, and then a way to have it mount over the actual glockenspiel body, which should actually be pretty simple because um, I should be able to use like similar techniques that the camera slider used. After that's all set, I think I will be able to understand more in a 3D space kind of way and visually and everything what would work best for the wiring. I think it'll just be overall just a better time uh, because I'll be able to see how it, are these things moving and existing together in space. What does that mean for wiring? How should we approach this? For me, I think I've mentioned this before, the way that I, I think and learn, um, I'm definitely more tactile. That's what I knew I missed a light somewhere. Um, I'm definitely more tactile in how I learn and think about things. Uh, so I think having the housing be set and then going from there with the wiring, it'll just be a better experience. So I'm hoping that this kind of second attack on this project goes a little better, a little bit more smoothly than the first one. Um, as I've expressed, the first one got a little bit too in my head on what I was expecting the project to be, and I wasn't letting myself adjust to how the project was presenting itself. And I was trying to make it do too many things as well. Uh, adding in those physical arcade buttons, although so tempting, and pink, um, it just wasn't a good idea. So, but here we are, uh, going at it again, and uh, I'm excited. Everything's working for now, and we'll go from there. So expect some updates, and uh, yeah. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, I'll put some resources in the description on stuff I've worked on it on for this so far. I should probably do like a playlist with the videos, even though some of them are kind of embarrassing because it's mainly about me uh, messing up and, and how I messed up. But that's okay. That's how we learn. We're all in this together. Right. Uh, but thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, literally. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.